I live in a sketchy area of a nice part of a city. So, while it's not terrible, there are some weirdos around. I've personally never had a problem, but I've had few female friends that had several close calls. The direct neighbourhood I live in is the dog area. So, there is always dog people walking and I definitely feel safe with my big ass pit. The dog park is fenced in an area with a large park, right next to the lake. It's weird. We live in a huge city but the park gets pitch black at night. There are trees and sheds and other obstacles inside the actual dog park. One night, around midnight, I decided to take my dog to the park as usual. My boyfriend was working the closing shift at his restaurant and the bus stop was on the way of the park so he decided to meet me there on his way home. As I am walking towards the dog park, I thought I saw the outline of a person inside. I actually could have sworn I did because I am constant vigilance for dog presence with a reactive dog. I assumed someone with their dog was inside so I walked around the park while keeping my eye on the dog park waiting for them to leave. No one ever came out. And when I eventually approached the fence, I did not see anyone or their dog inside. So, we enter and play as usual. Anyway, my dog and I are playing fetch, and he's running around doing his thing. I am standing next to the double-fenced entrance, reading the bulletin board. Randomly, my dog stops playing and runs up next to me. He sits quietly at my feet and is staring into the dog park. I didn't notice anything amiss. I thought it was kinda weird, but my dog was weird in general, so I didn't think that much of it. After a couple of minutes, my dog goes back to playing and my boyfriend comes up. He had apparently been trying to call me, but my phone was on silent. Apparently, there was a guy dressed completely in black with his hood up standing on the other side of the fence staring at me. I had no idea he was there. My boyfriend was walking down the street towards the park and saw all of this. My dog then came up and sat, but actually sat facing the wrong direction and wasn't even looking at the guy. My boyfriend then said the guy stared for another 30 seconds or so and then took off sprinting across the park. What is extra creepy was there was a police patrol car sitting a couple of blocks down. I think it's unsettling I had no idea the guy was like 3 feet from me. Did my dog's presence deter him? Did I interrupt a drug pickup? Looking to mug someone in the dark area maybe? Was someone else inside the park the entire time and that is what my dog was actually staring at? Or did he sense something was up? I do not know. We got the fuck out of there immediately after. This happened last year while I was studying abroad. I am a 20 year old female, 5 foot 3 and my friend who accompanied me at the time was 25. Probably a few inches taller than me. Not really an intimidating bunch at all. A little bit of a background. I had studied Arabic in the Middle East during the summer and was going to spend the fall doing a different program in a different country. I had about a month in between programs, so I went to Turkey to visit a friend of mine studying Turkish in Istanbul. We travelled around Turkey together and landed in a southern city near the Syrian border. The city was a fairly popular tourist destination. So, while we stood out, we did not feel threatened at all. I liked the city because it had a decent Arab population I could use my Arabic with. About half the residents spoke Arabic and the other half spoke Turkish. Perfect for my friend and I. My friend and I had been dining on the far end of the city from the guest house we were staying in. It got dark fairly early in the evening, but we were having fun smoking hookah and watching a Turkish band play. So we decided to stay out. At around 9.30pm we started heading back to the city. In many cities around Turkey, their main form of public transportation are minibuses they refer to as dolmuş. We knew the dolmuş would stop running soon. So, we found a convenience store and my friend asked the guy behind the counter what time the next dolmuş was coming and where the stop was. 
And he explained that the stop was right in front of his shop and that the next almush at 10pm would be the last for the evening. We thanked him and headed out to the empty street, waiting, uninterrupted. I shit you not, no more than five seconds after we had stopped by the roadside, a motorcyclist heading into the city abruptly pulled a U-turn and swerved to our side of the road. He asked us in bad English if we were waiting for the Dolmush. We said yes. He pointed to the curb not ten feet from where we were standing and told us to wait there. A little weirded out but not alarmed, we inched to the curb a little further down the roadside. It was very close and still within the convenience store keeper's sight, who was watching us with what I like to imagine was a sense of fatherly responsibility. At this point, my friend and I noticed an older man limping across the highway towards us. We pretended like we did not see him, assuming that he was a beggar and would ask for change. When he reached us, he engaged my friend in conversation in Turkish. I did not bother to listen in. I could not understand it. He says that the domush are done for the day, my friend told me. Now he had my interest. That was incredibly annoying, considering that that was the only form of transportation we had available to us at the time. I then asked her why he said they weren't running. I don't know. He's just saying that there are no more Dolmush. While my friend began arguing with the old man, one of the scarce cars on the road pulled up beside us. The passenger window rolled down, and the young man in the driver's seat leaned over the young woman in the passenger's seat and asked me in broken English if I needed a ride. I asked him in Arabic when the Dolmush would come. Ma fish Dolmush, he responded in Arabic. No more Dolmush. I tried to argue with him, telling him that the Dolmush was supposed to run until 10pm. Lesh, lesh, I kept asking, why, why? All he would say was, Ma fish Dolmush, over and over again. Meanwhile, to make things more confusing, my friend is still arguing with the older man in Turkish, and it's getting louder. While the driver insists that there are no more Dolmush and continues to offer us a ride in his car, the woman in the passenger seat is completely silent, staring at me with wide eyes. I look over to my friend and explain that he's offering us a ride. She looks at me strangely and continues arguing with the old man. I was not considering taking the ride, as I was incredibly uneasy about the whole situation at this point. As this chaos is unfolding, lo and behold, the Dolmush pulls up. I thank the driver in Arabic and hop on, feeling uneasy but not threatened. As we sat down, my friend asked me if I seriously wanted to go with the driver. I told her no, of course, and that I was smarter than that, but... I wanted to let her know why the driver had pulled up. She looked at me and said, Normally, I wouldn't have felt threatened by this at all. But the guy I was talking to freaked me out. When the car pulled up, he told me that he knew the driver, even though he didn't even check to see who it was. He kept saying that he knows the driver comes from a good family and that we should go with him. After that, to say I was profoundly creeped out would be an understatement. Instead of heading back to where we were staying, we stopped for dessert just to be safe. And that is how human traffickers tried to kidnap my friend and I in Turkey. I moved to a large city from an island when I was 19. It was a completely new environment as I had never lived anywhere but the island my entire life. Before I moved, I had a great group of friends, mostly made up of girls I'd known since elementary school. Needless to say, I was pretty lonely and making new friends was proving to be difficult. Four years later, I am 23, I had three friends, not so bad right? I then decided to enrol in college and study to be a teacher. I loved my classes and started to make friends there too. I was really excited to meet new people especially people who had shared my passion for teaching and helping children. At the start of a new class, I met a girl named Julia. 
She complimented my outfit before class started and then proceeded to roll her eyes at everyone who spoke to her and filled her nails through the entire 5 hour class and generally acting like she'd rather be anywhere else. This was rather off-putting so most of us just left her alone and didn't try to speak to her. A few weeks into the class, she suddenly warmed up to me, talking to me during breaks and asking about homework assignments or to see my notes. I'm not a very judgmental person, so I just figured she was going through something or she was just a type of person who tried to keep people at a distance. We stayed friends through the next few classes, talking on the phone, going to lunch, shopping, the typical female bonding stuff. She started to open up about her breakup with her much older boyfriend, her problems with her current boyfriend and her family. Turns out she had a pretty rough life and I started telling the other girls in my class to be nice and try to get to know her and that she wasn't so bad. New Year's rolls around and it turns out neither of us had plans to go out so she invited me to her house to drink wine, eat, do our nails and watch TV. I agree and we made plans for her to pick me up at around 5 so we could buy dinner, wine and snacks for the evening before the streets get crowded or blocked off. She pulls up to my house and texts me that she and her boyfriend, James, are there. He came along for the ride and was going out with some friends later that night. This was my first time meeting him. I went to get into the back seat and he jumped out of the passenger side and told me to sit up front, which was nice. We had a good time shopping, joking around and singing in the car. We were almost back at Julia's house when James said something. I'm not sure what, but it pissed Julia off. She turned around while driving and started yelling at him. James started yelling back and we started swerving. I'm obviously shocked and a little scared, so I say lightly, Hey Julia, I want to make it to next year. Eyes on the road. She snaps out of her rage laughs and apologises and continues driving. We get to her house and she and James immediately start fighting, go upstairs and close her bedroom door. I busy myself with putting the food where I think it should go and figure out how to turn on the TV and basically just sit there for an hour while the yelling gets louder and louder. I'm thinking about who I can call to come and get me but realise that I'm stuck. All the major streets are closed. At that moment, I hear a crash, followed by cursing. I stand up and consider going upstairs when James comes running down the stairs and out of the front door. I run upstairs to check on Julia. She's crying. I ask her what's going on and she says he got her in her face, calling her names and she punched him. I was totally unprepared for this, so I tell her the truth. They were both wrong and they both should apologise and possibly break up. Anger like this isn't healthy. She calms down and we eat, drink and end up having a pretty good night. The next morning, James shows up with flowers and coffee for all of us and it seems that all is well until they start fighting. Again. At this point, I just want to get home and forget about this craziness. I tell her it's getting late in the day and I need to get home for my annual NYD dinner. She agrees to take me home. James comes with us. He's suddenly being really rude and cold towards me, but I just chalk it up to him being in a bad mood about their fight. I finally get home and decided not to hang out with her as much. Julia has dropped out of school. We still talk on the phone a lot, but rarely hang out anymore. One night, she called me crying hysterically. James tried to choke her with her phone charger cord and punched her. I tell her that this is not okay and that she needs to break up with him. She's at his house and I tell her to call a cab or the cops and leave. I hear James in the background and the phone goes dead. I start calling and texting her back, terrified that he's hit her again or worse when she starts texting me. She's okay. He passed out drunk and she is scared. He hid her keys and phone and she's texting me through her iPad. I tell her again to get out of there, but she says she's too scared to leave. Finally, after almost an hour of silence, she said she called the cops. 
He tackled her while she was running out of the house, hit her repeatedly and ran off once he realized she had called 911. The next few days, the cops are looking for him. I am assuring her that she did the right thing and that she needs to stay away from him, for good this time. All seems well. Julia is back in my class, though we don't talk as much and I think that all the drama is over. Then, one night, at about 3am, the cops are pounding at my door. This scared the shit out of me. They say they had a 911 call from inside my house and I freak out. My dad also freaks out and my mum slept through all of it. Anyway, the cops ask us to check our home. No one else is there but the phone line is dead. They tell us that people can sometimes hack into the line and place false calls but to call them if anything happens. Weird. Two nights later, I'm in class and my phone buzzes. My mum is calling from home, which is odd because she knows I'm in class. I know she's home alone, so I go into the hall and answer. It's not my mum. The voice is distorted and he says, I know where you live. I know your mum's home alone. I'm going to kill her tonight. I start shaking, hung up the phone, call my mum's cell. She answers, surprised that I'm calling when I'm supposed to be in class and asks what's wrong. I tell her to make sure all the doors are locked, get the shotgun and call the police. Someone just called from the landline threatening to kill her. She goes to call and the landline is dead. I tell her to hang up and call the police from her cell and that I'll call dad and I'll be home as soon as I can. Home calls, same voice, but similar message. Home calls, same voice, similar message, but this time he starts laughing. He calls over and over while I'm frantically trying to call my cousin and tell her it's an emergency and that I need her to get home as soon as possible to get me. The police officer calls from my mother's phone. He says no one is in the house, on the street or in my yard. He asked how many calls I'd gotten and tells me that he'll stay until I get home. For 20 minutes while I wait for my ride, I get 15 calls, all from home. Same voice telling me that I am going to die and so will my mum and that my dad is going to come home and find our corpses. I can't even explain how scared I was at that moment. Then I got mad, really, really mad. The next time he calls, I start screaming at him. Come get me, motherfucker. I leave my fucking door unlocked. You think you can kill me? Threatening my family? Fucking do it and I'll fucking fill you with bullets, you little bitch. Hiding your voice and your number? I'll fucking find you. I will fucking kill you, you little shit. I'm not scared of you. The line goes dead. I'm shaking and crying as my cousin pulls up. I fill her in and she asks who the hell would be doing this to me. I don't have enemies. People usually really like me. Then it clicks. James. Julia told me that he still had her phone and iPad. James used to call her from random numbers of her friends when they were fighting and she wouldn't answer his calls. James threatened to kill her mother and her dog. We get to my house and tell the cop I know who's calling. I give him a full name and directions to his house. While I'm standing there, I get another call from my house. The cop answers for me, calls him by his name, tells him that he's a police officer and that he needs to stop harassing me. Now. The line goes dead and I don't get another call all night. I sat in the living room until dawn with my shotgun loaded, waiting. My dad comes home the next day. We go and fill out a complaint at the police station. Turns out James is on probation. I call Julia and tell her everything, crying about how scared I was. She got angry at me and says that James didn't do anything, yelling that I am making it all up and I'm jealous of their love and that I'm bitter and alone. Turns out they're back together. I hung up on her and changed my number, called my school and requested to be transferred to a different campus. Julia then emailed me saying that she'd been trying to call and that she confronted James and that he admitted that he was trying to scare me because I had tried to come between them. I ignored it and I haven't heard from either since.